Uh, we got this Fox Business alert. We, we already know that the markets are betting heavily on the Federal Reserve pausing its interest rate hike cycle at the June meeting, the next one. But I don't know. Can we punch up the very latest Fed funds predictions for 1st July? OK, futures market now sees about a 40 percent chance for a quarter point hike in uh, sorry, quarter point cut in July. But when you flip it to September and that meeting, 28 percent of the nearly 80 percent who think we will see a second cut after July are betting it will be a 50 basis point cut. So half a percent, much bigger. But Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank President Neil Kashkari dumping cold Gatorade on that idea today. Kashkari, a voting member, we remind you, said inflation is too high and, quote, I am now on the more hawkish end of the Fed policy spectrum. But what are the biggest voices on the street girding for? Joining us now, Charles Schwab, chief investment strategist, Lizanne Saunders. I don't know, Lizanne, what, what do you think? You know, is this growing bet on a rate cut another fever dream by futures traders? Well, I, I would say to those uh, betting that way, be careful what you wish for, because I think the conditions that would support uh, not just a pause, but a pivot in fairly short order to rate cuts would be pretty horrific conditions. This idea that all else equal, meaning not much change in inflation, which is nowhere near the Fed's target, um, no major disruptions, at least yet, in the labor market or more broadly in the economy. I just don't see the conditions under which the Fed would pivot to cuts. If it happens, it's probably because of something much more serious erupting within the economy, most specifically within the labor market, or the banking system problems turn into something a bit more systemic. Absent that, I think pause is the the mo for the for the Fed for the foreseeable future. So you would you would have to see somewhat of a, a black swan or or at least a duckling of sorts before you'd even expect to see a 25 basis point cut. Well, this idea that they would start cutting without inflation anywhere near their target, but absent any turmoil in their other official mandate, which is the labor market, maybe unofficial, which is potential systemic problems in the banking system, I just I think there's disconnects in that narrative. In the meantime, what they're showing is that they, they think of the rate tool as the inflation tackling uh, tool. And I think uh, a pause, I think the May meeting was probably the, the final hike, at least for now. And then their macro prudential tools, inclusive of things like the bank term funding facility that they put in place in the immediate aftermath of SVB, sure. Uh, I think that's how they could potentially tackle ongoing stresses in the banking system and think of those tools as somewhat distinct. And of course, the FDIC has proposed that there is an increase in what they expect to get from fees as far as the big banks are concerned, right. as they pay into kind of refill the coffers of the FDIC right. and what they had to spend to kind of rescue all of the depositors for Silicon Valley Bank signature, right. et cetera. Uh, monetary policy. Let's see where it is going, because when you look at inflation, yes, today we got PPI pretty much in line, but year over year, consumer inflation, 5.5 percent, and that was core. It feels like it's still sticky. In that scenario, are there areas in the market that, that look decent to you? Well, I wouldn't say areas maybe in the way people traditionally think of areas, mm -hmm. which tends to be more at the sector level. I think factor orientation makes more sense right now than monolithic sector calls. And tied into the macro environment, in particular, what's sort of dear or missing in the macro environment is a way to think about which factors, another word for characteristics, make sense. So most aggressive tightening cycle in 40 years. That's starting, obviously, to put strains on companies that don't have the cash flow to either fund their operations or even pay interest on debt. So you want to look for ample interest coverage. Obviously, stronger balance sheets of companies that have more cash, less debt. We're in a fairly weak forward earnings revision environment. Look for positive earnings revisions, positive earnings surprise, lower volatility. Uh, so there's sort of a quality wrapper around factors. And I think that's a better way to approach this kind of market, especially with correlations coming down, than just trying to make a blanket, you know, overweight, underweight sector call or two, which is going to, in some cases, load you up with some great stocks and some not so great stocks. So focus more on factors and sectors. And before we go, 
after the pause, which is widely expected for the next meeting, which is in June, how do you think the markets react? <laughs> You know, I don't know. I think it depends on what else is going on. Because everybody says they're going to rip higher. Well, first of all, I, I really take issue with what I hear often, which is usually has the word typical in it. You know, the market typically does. Right. And I, I just right. put a column in the Financial Times that got posted online today about just this issue. 14 rate hike cycles in the history of the s back to the late 20s. And the range of outcomes around that final rate hike, in fact, if you look a year out from the final rate hike, you're talking about a range of down more than 30 percent to up more than 30 percent. Oh, kind of so wide. <laughs> shame on anyone that says typical or average, because it's a small sample side with a gigantic range. And there's so many other factors that come into play, the, the spread between the final hike and the first cut. Sure. Even there, what's the reason for the, for the first cut? Is it financial crisis type situation? Or if it's a really benign soft landing like 1995, where you are also in the midst of the, the, the blowing up of the internet uh, bubble. So every outcome is, is different. Is different. Yeah. I'll go back in saying that I think if it does look like the Fed is going to cut in short order, mm -hmm. Given what would likely be the conditions supporting that, that would be, I think, a risk factor, clearly, for the market. Interesting. All right. Lizanne Saunders, marching to the beat of always her own drum. Yeah, it's like chaos <laughs> theory with Jeff, Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, where he says, you think that the drop of water is going to go this way, but then it doesn't. Thank you, Lizanne. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Good to see you.